sometimes you have to accept the fact that there are some things you don't understand and you have to continue pushing forward even though you don't understand those things. And this is especially true in mathematics. In fact, the further you go in math, the more you encounter situations where you're using theorems, you're using propositions, you're using facts, things that you are being told are 100% true and you have to just accept it and, and move on. Now, I'm not saying it's not good to go back and try to understand everything and try to understand where everything comes from because there is a lot to be said for that, a lot. It's, it's well worth it. But the reality is time is always passing. We only have a finite number of time. And if you're taking a math class and you're trying to learn everything, you're trying to understand why everything works, it's going to be really hard. I'm not saying you shouldn't try. I'm just saying it's going to be really hard and you should always focus on moving forward, on keeping up with whatever it is you're supposed to learn in that class, whatever it is the teacher is saying you should learn, whatever it is that's going to show up on the test because your grade matters, right? Your grade matters. It matters a lot. Now, you know, C's get degrees, <laughs> right? So, but it really really matters. It, it can make a difference. I've seen people who have gotten Bs and because of that, they didn't get a scholarship. At the same time, 20 years from now, your grade might not matter. In any case, this video is motivated by an email I got, which is a really good email. I'm going to read it here. I'm going to open it up because it applies to a lot of people. And I have seen this. I have seen this repeatedly over the years in students and it holds people back. The person's name is Ian. This email is uh, fairly recent. Help. Hi, I'm taking AP physics in high school and I'm completely lost. I feel like maybe if I knew how stuff in math worked, I could understand the formulas and know how to derive them. As of right now, I don't know how to learn this type of stuff. For instance, I know the formula for a circle and the quadratic formula, but I don't understand where the formula comes from or how it was written. Not only do I want to know how these formulas came into existence, I want to truly understand the logic behind why we use math so I can have a more intuitive outlook on my math and science courses. How would you go about this? So first I'll just briefly answer your questions, your specific math questions that you asked in this video or in this, in this email, I'll answer them in this video. Uh, so the formula for a circle comes from the definition. You can say uh, a circle is the set of all points in the plane. Uh, that uh, is equidistant from a fixed point. That fixed point is called the center. And uh, that equidistance or that fixed distance is called the radius. And you can use that definition to draw a little picture and use the distance formula to come up uh, with the equation for a circle. The quadratic formula, uh, you, you write down the quadratic, form, uh, quadratic equation, ax squared plus bx plus c equals zero. a is not zero. You complete the square. In any case, this video is not really about, you know, how to come up with the formula for a circle or, or how to derive the, the quadratic equation. It's more about sometimes you just have to accept those things and, and, and focus on, on what you're trying to learn. So in your case, you're in AP physics. Physics is a whole nother beast. You're going to have formulas in physics that you need to not only memorize and understand, but you need to know how to apply them, how to manipulate them. So you have to read the question and know what formulas to use and know how to apply them. And you have to know all the, all the laws of physics that you're supposed to know. So it takes a lot of effort and a lot of focus on physics. When I took physics, one of my downfalls, because it sounds like you're having a hard time and I was having one too, so I'll just tell you, was my math was really weak. I had a hard time solving for variables. You know, we had an equation, uh, it, had, it had fractions. It was like one over P plus one over Q. And, and you know, you had to solve for P. And I couldn't, I couldn't multiply. I couldn't do the algebra. And that's what held me back. In your case, you're not saying that's the problem. You're, you're kind of just saying it's that you really want to understand where things come from. And again, that's a good, it's a good thing to focus on, but you really want to focus more on progressing in your physics class. So how, how can you go about, you know, learning where things come from? Well, books, right? A book 
will usually have the derivation. You can also just Google it, right? You know, derivation of quadratic formula. There's probably a YouTube video. I have a video on that. Um, for circles, I have a derivation of the circle in my, you know, conic section playlist uh, where I talk about circles. I'm sure there's a video where I derive the formula using a picture. So these things are all on the internet. You can search for them, you know, just do that. But the key takeaway from this video is that you should really, really focus on trying to understand the stuff in your physics class. Some other tips I have for you are if you're completely lost in physics, go see your teacher. I don't know um, too much about you know, high school. I, I know mostly about colleges. I've taught college for years. I've taught for many years and uh, I never taught high school. So I don't know how it works, but I'm sure your teacher has some type of like office that you can go see them in and you can ask them questions. That is usually a really, really good idea. You know, make it known to your teacher that you're trying and, and go see them and seek genuine help on your physics questions. And that, that can make a difference. That can make a difference because those interactions, those experiences you have with your teacher uh, are going to be good and you're going to learn a lot uh, from from those interactions. So yeah, physics physics is a beast. It's one that um, you know takes a, an incredible amount of work, an incredible amount of work. Um, there's some books you can get. There's workbooks on physics that are extremely good uh, that have problems in them. I have I have several. I don't have one here within arm's length, but I'll I'll leave a link uh, in the description try to leave a link to a workbook that you can get that might help you uh, with, with AP physics. But yeah, just keep grinding away and keep focusing on the physics. And this thing you have with, you know, trying to understand where things come from, it's really good that you have that. I'm not saying it's bad. It's a good thing. It's a good thing to be curious. It's a good thing to want to learn why, but don't let it hold you back, right? Focus on the physics and keep pushing forward. I have seen many, many people get hung up on one little thing and they'll spend two hours trying to find you know, out why something works, but it's not really relevant to what they should be doing in the class. They should be learning you know, topic X, Y, Z. Instead, they're backtracking for hours working on things that, sure, it's interesting. Sure, it's great and it's enriching. It's, it's, it's helping you to learn those things, but it's not what's going to help you now, right? You have to focus on priorities now and priority now is AP physics in high school. You have to own it, right? You have to own it. So I'll leave a link in the description to a book. Hopefully it will help you uh, with your physics. If anyone else has advice uh, for this person who is in high school and they are taping, taking AP physics, uh, leave a comment in the comment section below. Whenever you leave comments, it helps other people because people read the comments. And also just props, Ian, <laughs> you're taking physics in high school. That's really good. Uh, I didn't take physics in high school. It took me uh, a long time to get to physics. I, I took physics in college. And uh, I struggled and I think I got, I got B's or B pluses in physics one and two, and I got an A in physics three. If you want to get better at math, I do have math courses. You can also check those out. They're on Udemy, but uh, please use the links from my website. Uh, my website is freemathvids.com or mathsorcerer.com. It's not a great website. It's pretty old school and outdated and not great, but it works. It's legit. If you click the links on my website, it will take you to the Udemy course. And you'll, I'm pretty sure if you use my links, you'll always get a low price because I lowered the price to the bare minimum on all my courses. So whenever you click my links, you should get a low price. Um, so yeah, please use those links. If you want to learn uh, mathematics, I've got courses on algebra, trig, calculus, differential equations, advanced calculus, abstract algebra, some proofwriting courses, uh, a lot of mathematics you can learn there. And if you're not a subscriber and you feel like you found any value in this content, feel free to hit subscribe. If you take away anything from this video, it should be a lesson. It should be that sometimes it's really important to just push forward and not get hung up on things that aren't going to help you immediately. You know, if, if it's kind of like if you have to go to work today, you know, you, you have to go to work. So you prioritize that. So if you're an AP calculus, prioritize that, right? Prioritize what's going to have the biggest, most direct impact on your life. And if you're in AP physics, own that class. Until next time, keep doing mathematics.